Let's understand how the floyd warshall algorithm finds the shortest path between any two pairs of nodes in a graph. Earlier, we've seen single-source shortest path algorithms like Dijkstra's and Bellman-Ford. If you're not familiar with those, I suggest checking them out first, as they provide a solid foundation for understanding shortest path algorithms. Those algorithms are designed to find the shortest path from a single source node to all the other nodes. For example, from node A to all the other nodes in the graph. But what if we want to find the shortest path between all pairs of nodes? One approach could be to run those single source algorithms on each node once. However, this method can be inefficient, and that's where the floyd warshall algorithm comes to the rescue. This algorithm operates on the adjacency matrix of the graph, where each entry represents the weight of the edge between two nodes. If no direct edge exists, the entry is set to infinity. Now let's name this matrix M0, and we need to initialize another matrix T0, known as the predecessor matrix. This matrix keeps track of the previous nodes in the shortest paths and will be used to construct the shortest path between any two nodes. The core idea here is to systematically visit each node and check if it can act as an intermediate point to provide a shorter path between any two nodes. If such a path exists, we update the matrices accordingly. This process is repeated for all nodes in the graph. Let's find the next matrices in the following iteration. Keep in mind, the matrices shown below are purely for demonstration purposes. In reality, only one instance of these matrices exists and gets updated dynamically. This visual breakdown is just to help you understand how the algorithm works. Let's start finding shorter paths via node A first. The rows and columns connected to A will not be updated because they already represent the direct connections. Additionally, the diagonal elements will remain unchanged, as updating them would imply the presence of a negative weight cycle. If you're unfamiliar with negative weight cycles, I recommend checking out our video on the Bellman-Ford algorithm for a detailed explanation. Now, let's see how the updation works. First, let's check the path from B to C. The current cost for this path is 2. We'll check if a shorter path exists via node A. First, going from B to A, there is an edge with a weight of 3. Next, we check the cost of going from A to C, which is infinity, meaning there is no path from A to C. Since there's no shorter path through node A, the previous edge with a weight of 2 remains the shortest path. Next, let's check the path between B and D. The current shortest cost to reach D from B is infinity, meaning there's no direct path. We'll check if a shorter path exists via node A. First, the path from B to A has a cost of 3, and the path from A to D has a cost of 3. Adding these, the total cost becomes 6, which is less than the current shortest path of infinity. Therefore, we update the cost to 6 and set the previous node to A, as the path to D goes through A. Next is the path between C and B. The current shortest cost to reach B from C is infinity, meaning there's no direct path. We'll check if a shorter path exists via node A. First, the path from C to A has a cost of infinity, meaning there's no path yet, and the path from A to B has a cost of two. However, the total still remains infinity, so we won't update this one. Next is the path between C and D. The current shortest path has a cost of four. The path from C to A has a cost of infinity, and from A to D is 3. Since this is more than the current cost of 4, we will not update it. Next is the path between D and B. The current shortest path has a cost of 6. However, if we go via A, the cost from D to A is negative 2, and from A to B is 2, giving a total of 0, which is less than the current cost. So we update it to zero and set the previous node to A since the path is coming via A. Next is the path from D to C. Currently, the shortest path has a cost of infinity. If we look via A, the cost of going from D to A is negative two and from A to C is infinity, meaning there is no path yet. So we will not update it. Now the first iteration is finished. Let's name this new updated matrix as M1 and the updated predecessor matrix as T1. In the next iterations, we will check if we can reduce the costs further by going through other nodes. Since we've already checked node A, let's now see whether we can get shorter paths via node B. And just like the previous iteration, we will not be updating the rows and column of B as they already represent the direct connections. 
Also, we will not check the diagonal element since our example graph does not have negative weight cycles. Now let's see the path between A and C. Currently, the cost to reach there is infinity, meaning no path is known. But if we look via B, first, going from A to B has a path with a cost of 2, and going from B to C also has a path that costs 2, giving a total of 4. Since 4 is less than infinity, we will update it to 4 and set the previous node to B, as the path is coming via B. Next is the path between A and D. Currently, the shortest cost is 3, but if we check via B, the cost from A to B is 2, and the cost from B to D is 6. This gives a total of 8, which is more than the current cost of 3. So we will not update this one. And similarly, we will perform the updates. Try pausing the video and solving it yourself. You should get these updated values. Now, this is the matrix M2 and T2. Similarly, we will find the matrices M3 and T3 via node C in the next iteration. And then the matrices M4 and T4 via node D. And once we check the shorter paths via all the nodes, we will stop. Now, we can use these final updated matrices to construct the shortest path from any pair of nodes. Now, let's construct the path from node C to B. Here in the matrix, we can see that the shortest path has a cost of 4. But to actually construct it, we need to look at the previous node in the predecessor matrix, which is node A. So we will add A to the path. Next, we need to find the previous node in the path from C to A, which is D. So we will add D now. Now, this is our shortest path from C to B. This is how to construct the shortest path between any pair of nodes. Now, the algorithm loops over each node once and traverses the whole matrix for each node. So the time complexity is big O of V cube, where V is the number of nodes. And the space complexity is big O of V square, as we use matrices to store the shortest paths and predecessor information. Now, let's see the Python code implementation. Feel free to skip this part if you're not interested. First, we will import the math library. Then, we will define a function that takes the dimension n and the matrix as input parameters. Then, we initialize a variable infinity using the math library we imported earlier. Next, we initialize the previous node matrix with none values. Then, we also create a variable nodes that maps indices to letters like a, b, c, and so on. After that, we loop over the distance matrix, and for each pair of nodes, if there's a direct edge between them, we set the previous node in the previous node matrix to the source node. We then run a loop n times, where n is the number of nodes. In each iteration, we traverse the entire matrix once, and at each element, we check if there is a shorter path. If a shorter path is found, we update both the distance and the previous node matrices. We then loop over the diagonal elements of the resultant distance matrix and check if any element is less than zero. If there is, we indicate that the algorithm fails due to the presence of a negative weight cycle and return none. Otherwise, we return the distance and previous node matrices. Check out the GitHub link in the description box for the complete code.